So we really want to introduce this software today, specifically Beeline 2.0. And what is Beeline? We're going to describe it as a companion software for our, our current genotyping array analysis portfolio, uh, which uh, most of the time includes Genome Studio software. And this software, Beeline, is meant to provide a flexible um, workflow and to augment existing functionalities in Genome Studio and iScan control software in order to facilitate analysis of large array experiments. And a note here is just that Beeline is not meant to be a replacement for Genome Studio, but really is meant to be kind of an expansion pack to uh, help you with um, streamlining that analysis workflow. So the outline of what we'll be going over today, first we'll go into just a description of what Beeline is and what it's used for. Um, so the features and its benefits, but then also an introduction to the GTC file format if you're not familiar with that. After that, we'll go into a um, demonstration of how to install and use Beeline in the recommended workflow. And then lastly, we'll just try to figure out how to apply these concepts in example array analysis workflows. So moving on, what is Beeline? So to understand that question, the first thing that I'd like to try to define is what we mean when we talk about genotyping array analysis. So what we're talking about in this case is from getting from a fully processed um, Infinium array <clears throat> to genotype calls in a report format. So the steps that are involved in getting from that array to having all the nucleotide uh, bases in a report include a couple of um, different processes. So the first step, of course, is to actually scan the arrays and extract the raw data here given in a red and green intensity data file for each sample. <clears throat> After that, that raw intensity data must then be normalized, and the software must be trained to um, associate those expected intensity patterns with uh, genotypes for a biallelic SNP, so A, 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 B, and B, B patterns. After calling those genotypes, a really crucial step is to QC that data to ensure that those genotypes that are called are accurate, and then also to modify those cluster positions for those genotypes in case there are any, any inaccuracies that were not covered in the first pass. After you're happy with your data and um, have assessed its quality, then you're ready to output the form or output the data in a format that can then be used in downstream analysis, whether that be copy number variation analysis, uh, GWAS, linkage analysis, um, whatever that may be, you just need to have the data in a format that is compatible with that next step. So in terms of the actual workflow in Genome Studio um, in doing those steps, <coughs> The first step is typically to create the project using that raw data, and then once you've loaded that project and called the genotypes, there's an iterative process of evaluating the samples and genotype calls and then refining the cluster file if you already have one provided, or creating one if there is not a cluster file existent for that product. <clears throat> once this process is complete, you can then go into generating your report. So if Genome Studio already takes care of all these steps, the question is, why use Beeline? Well, now we have a parallel workflow presented in Beeline. So as you can see that Beeline, the description on the high level of the workflow is pretty much the same thing as what is in GM Studio, with the exception that this whole process right here is taken out of this um, workflow. And so if we think of Gene, or as, as Beeline as an expansion pack for Genome Studio, what it allows is an up-leveling of those core workflow functions and allowing Genome Studio processing to be focused on this process of deeper analysis and clustering. This works because the software can integrate in their functionality. So what we can see here is that once you have evaluated your samples, you do have the option of porting that um, deeper analysis into Genome Studio software to use those clustering functions and to, to then port those changes back to Beeline to continue to report. And um, so one thing that enables Beeline as just um, a companion software is that ability to be able to um, use Genome Studio's deeper functions as well, but also um, streamlining the process within the software itself. <coughs> Aside from clustering um, being removed, another analysis shortcut that's taken in Beeline is exclusively using GTC files as the input format. 
Uh, Gina Studio typically uses uh, the raw IDAT or intensity data files as input, so you can also use GTC files. D-Line only uses GTC files <coughs> as the input. So what is a GTC file? So a GTC file, it stands for genotype call files. What it is is you take the raw intensity data files and then with analysis in autoconvert or autocall using the cluster file and the manifest file, you then convert that raw intensity data into genotype calls stored in a binary format. So this binary file, the GTC file, contains all of the information about the sample that's run on a specific genotyping array experiment, including all the genotypes, um, the logr dev, the p10gc, all of that information is all stored in a binary format for each sample. Um, and once again, this can be performed by the autoconvert software, which uh, can run on iScan control software or in Beeline, or the autocall software, which is run if you have an Illumina LIM so uh, server. So that's what a GTC file is. What using GTC files allows you to do is first to, of course, have a faster processing time. So rather than processing straight up raw intensity data from the scanner, you already have genotypes and that information called in the binary format for the GTC file. Um, and so because of that, as a result, even in Genome Studio, GTC files are processed about 20% faster than IDAP files, and that's shown here. Another um, peripheral benefit is that since the GTC file format is one file per sample, whereas IDATs have two files per sample, um, they're kind of similar sizes, so what that ends up being is like a little bit uh, more than half um, of the amount of space taken for a GTC file versus two IDAT files. So when it comes to sharing and archiving data, it may be a benefit to have that smaller format to do that. And then lastly, what GTC file format allows is input into the compatible software tools that use the GTC file um, format exclusively. So that would include some open source tools that use the, um, the genotype calls in that format um, to run. Uh, Luffy's Multi, which is our cytogenetic uh, visualization and analysis software, um, it uses GTC files exclusively for the BDRARY products. And then lastly, Beeline, which is our topic for discussion today. So what the GTC file format confers as a benefit for Beeline is faster project creation. So we have a benchmark test here with Genome Studio versus Beeline. Um, and you can see for some products, <coughs> and the scales differ on the y-axis, um, for some products, you can actually get almost 30 times faster project creation um, in terms of loading each sample in Beeline versus Genome Studio. Um, so what that could look like is, you know, if you have a project that has a certain number of samples that would normally take a day to make a project for in Genome Studio, it could potentially take about an hour in Beeline. And so definitely lots of time savings that are um, given by using the GTC file format. So the other benefits that Beeline confers are really dependent on that first um, faster project creation. Because we're able to create our project much faster, we're also able to view the Infinium genotyping controls much faster than in Genome Studio. So this is a new feature for Beeline 2.0. Beeline 1, uh, version 1 did not have the ability to view these genotyping controls, but this is a great addition in the 2.0 version that now you have the ability to view um, those control dashboard graphs um, in the context of the Beeline software. Um, another unique feature to Beeline that Genome Studio does not have is this threshold function that allows you to auto-filter samples or loci prior to further analysis. So this bar here is actually dynamic, and you can move it up and down, and um, it's just a nice way to be able to visualize QC parameters and to be able to filter above and below those thresholds. Um, another benefit is that you're able to export reports from Beeline. And so, uh, coupled with faster project creation, if your only goal in um, loading a project is to generate a report, then Beeline could be a way to really get to that answer a lot faster. The formats that are generated for the reports are the same formats that are used in Genome Studio. And then lastly, that integration with Genome Studio means that you can use both software together on the same data without having to generate a totally new project in Genome Studio. And then because of that, you're able to use both software together on the same data for their different strengths. 
So as we can see, Beeline can be used for fast project generation and QC, whereas Genome Studio can really focus on using those functions for deeper analysis and clustering. So just to sum it up, Beeline is a companion software tool for Genome Studio genotyping, and it enables a more flexible and streamlined workflow through the many functionalities that it has. All right, so we went through some introductory information about the Beeline software. Now we're going to go into some demonstrations of how to actually start using it. So to install, and I'm just going to throw up a slide here about the install specifications. The only thing to really note here is that it is a Windows-only software. But in terms of how to install it, it's freely available on our website. Just go to the Beeline support page to download the installer and the link is shown here. Once you actually launch the installer, uh, the installer will run and then also run a dependent autoconvert 2.0.exe installer as well that's also included in that installer package. And that's all packaged together because VLAN uses the autoconvert software to generate or to convert IDAP files to GTC files. Um, so once both of those packages install, all you have to do is do a one-time MyIllumina login to authenticate the installation, and then Beeline is ready to use. So, super easy to install. All right, so now that we have the software installed, we can actually start using it. And um, I have the workflow here, but then also laid out in um, kind of five steps. So if we don't have GTC files already, we need to figure out a way to obtain those GTC files. Then we can create our project. In the context of our project, we can then view the charts and then filter based on those uh, QC metrics and criteria. And once we have filtered down our projects, then you are ready to export your report. So first, how to obtain GTC files. So as a review, what is required to generate a GTC file for a given sample is the raw data, which is in the form of a red and green IDOT file, um, for each sample, and that will be generated off of your Illumina scanner, HiScanner iScan. You will also need the manifest file in BPM format that is specific for the product that you are using. And then you will need a cluster file, which is a .egt. So cluster files are provided with all of our commercial arrays up front. For cu custom arrays, if you do not have a cluster file provided, then you may need to use Genome Studio to generate one. But once you have that cluster file, then you can definitely use this workflow to create a GTC file. So if you have those three files together, what you need to actually generate the GTC file is to run either the autocall or the autoconvert software. So autocall is exclusively a service that runs in Illumina LIMS. Um, so if you have an Illumina LIMS server, then you can run the autocall service there. Um, if you do not, then there are options to either run it on board the iScan control software so that while the array is scanning, or while the scanner is scanning the arrays, it will automatically convert um, the IDAT files into GTC for your output. Um, and if you don't do it on board the scanner, then you can also run it on any computer using autoconvert in Beeline. So how to do that in Beeline? Um, in the Beeline software, there's a button that says convert IDAT to GTC. Once you click that, it will give you the option to select all the directories for the um, required files, and once you hit next, it will launch the autoconvert software and begin that conversion process. So I have a quick demonstration of that right here. So convert IDAT to GTC. I'm going to route Beeline to the folder containing my IDAT, in this case all of my scan folders directly from the scanner. You have the option to either generate those GTC files in those scan folders or to create a different folder to contain just GTC files. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. Um, I will create a folder, name it GTC, and then designate my manifest and cluster file. All right, so that all looks good, and so I'm ready to begin that conversion process. 
I click next and the autoconvert.exe window pops up showing me that the analysis has, or the conversion process has started. So that's gonna run until all of those are complete. But when that is done, then I will have GTC files. Okay, so now that I have GTC files, I am ready to create a Beeline project. And so there are two steps in this. First, to select which project type you want to make. And then after you select the project type, to select what method you want to use to load the data. So for project type, we can see that when you go to File, New Project, there are two different project types that are available. Um, so there's sample and SNP analysis, and then a validate samples project. So the difference between the two is um, validate samples is really a stripped down uh, streamlined project that you can create, and it's typically just used to look at um, sample information. And so you can see that for most of the functionality is um, not loaded into the project, just the samples table is loaded in. But examples of when you might want to do this is if you want to just get a quick look at the call rate for the logger dev um, of all the samples that you've run thus far, um, and that's all you want to do um, to be able to select samples for requeuing or things like that. Um, typically, the type of project that you'll be using is that sample and SNP analysis type project because that includes all the functionalities that are in Beeline. So, validate samples project, just a demonstration of what that would look like. So I'm creating a project, validate samples. Um, and in this case, I'm going to just load my GTC files. And once I hit next, um, that's all it needs to create a project. It's just gonna load the information straight from the GTC files without including any loci information or controls information from the manifest. And what this allows is to get a, just a quick look at um, all of the call rates and sample statistics for a project. All right, and you can see here that the loci table is not populated because that information was not loaded. So that is what a validate samples project looks like, but like I said, most of the time we'll be using a sample and SNP analysis. Um, so for a sample and SNP analysis, um, you can choose then the data loading method that you want to use. So you have the option to either use a sample sheet, and a sample sheet in this case would contain additional information about the samples. Um, it is, uh, there's a template available for each product um, that you can find on your support page for the product you're using. Um, but basically the format is the same .csv format that is used in Genome Studio with the optional additional column of path. So the other way that you can load data in is to load it directly um, from uh, the folder that the sample is saved in. Um, and so if you use this option, then you just need to navigate Beeline to a folder that contains all the GTC files or a parent's folder containing the GTC files in um, barcoded subdirectories. What I mean by that is in the original scan folders that are generated off the scanner. All right, so let's create a project. So I've got a sample sheet here with that optional path column on the right. And I'm gonna not save it, but it was already saved before, so that's okay. I'm going to create a project and locate my sample sheet. And since the path is already in there, I don't need to do anything else. I'm just gonna put in my manifest and cluster file. Um, and you can see there, um, there's just 12 samples in there, so it's pretty fast. It's gonna load the cluster positions from the cluster file, and at the end, I have my 12 sample projects containing all the low site information. So that's how to create a project with a sample sheet that has the path column and uh, an example of what that path column looks like. Um, if you do not add that path column, you can definitely use this optional directory to override path from sample sheet option. Um, you just browse to the location where your GTC files are and Beeline will be able to locate those and um, you know, load those from your sample sheet. Okay, some simple guidelines for um, using sample sheets in Beeline is, um, first, if you're using Excel to edit the spreadsheet, uh, just make sure that those barcodes um, are not in that scientific notation format prior to saving it as a CSV. 
because if you save it in, as a CSV in that format, then the CSV will include the scientific notation format, um, and Beeline will not be able to read it. <coughs> Another note is that the manifest name that is in the sample sheet must exactly match the name of the manifest used, because uh, Beeline will be using that exact name to find the manifest. And then lastly, for that optional path column, um, just as a review, uh, it's required unless you actually use that um, option to navigate to where your GTC files are stored. So here's an example of creating a project without a sample sheet now. <clears throat> and just to show what it looks like, you can toggle to sample directory and then um, select where your GTC files are stored. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. You put your manifest file in and your cluster file, and then you can complete project creation. <laughs> so great. So we walked through the different um, ways to create a project in Beeline, um, so the two different types of projects, and then two different methods that you can use uh, to load in your data, depending on what works best for you. But um, once you've completed your project creation, you can then move into uh, viewing the QC charts. And so this is going back to that really crucial step of just making sure that your data quality looks good before you progress to next steps in analysis, um, verifying that the assay went well, that the samples look good, and that the loci uh, metrics are performing well. Um, so in Beeline, there is an option to select charts. And if you open that button, you have now uh, access to some pre-filled charts um, that can show you really quickly um, over the whole project, the call rates, blogger dev, uh, stuff like that, but then also um, pre-filled charts that have the Infinium controls, both sample dependent and independent. <laughs> so this is more geared towards if you're already familiar with using Genome Studio. Um, if you're not familiar with the controls dashboard in Genome Studio, I highly rec recommend this linked webinar um, at the bottom, <laughs> which walks through the process and also what these controls are actually assaying um, in order to be able to look at assay performance and sample performance. <clears throat> um, another thing that you can do is you can actually export um, a PDF report that contains however many reports that you want to include. So a brief demo of that. <clears throat> In my VLAN project, I'm going to charts. And you can see the available charts um, come pre-formatted with every install of Beeline, but you can definitely add um, other charts that you would like to see as well. So you can see here that um, all the controls um, that are typically seen in the Genome Studio Controls dashboard are also shown here. You also have the option to scroll left and right or to uh, use your scroll wheel to zoom into the controls if you want to look closer at certain samples. Um, another thing you can do is you can create a report, um, and by selecting the charts that you want to include in that report, um, you can add those to that report and then, you know, export it into a PDF that you can then use to share to a collaborator or <coughs> keep it in your records, um, things like that. <coughs> All right. So that's a view of how we can view QC metrics in Beeline. Based on those QC metrics, we can then use Beeline tools to filter those samples and loci um, to filter out poorly performing um, samples or um, less, uh, less well performing uh, loci prior to exporting your final report. So the two different ways that you can do this, um, you can use the filter tool, which is very similar to Genome Studio. Um, and a filter based on different metrics, and then uh, you have the option in the table to right-click those selected <coughs> um, entries and include and exclude them. So that's pretty familiar if you use Genome Studio, um, but another thing that Uline has is this set thresholds function. So once you select set thresholds, it gives you this dynamic um, kind of scroll line here to be able to set thresholds. And an example situation where you might want to use that is if you have this, uh, within the context of all the samples in your project, you have this kind of cliff edge situation where most of your samples are performing a certain way, but then after a certain point, everything drops off um, in kind of an outlier fashion. 
Um, so what you can do is uh, this line here, you can click and drag it um, up and down if you want to interact um, with the, the patterns that are observed in your data, or you can set them automatically to a certain number. So an example of what that looks like. So we're going to go to set thresholds. And I'm going to set a threshold based on call rate. So for this project, most of my samples are pretty high call rate. Um, and I can click this line and move it up and down to set my sample threshold differently. Um, but what I'm actually going to do in this case, um, after scrolling back and forth, uh, is I'm going to set my threshold to 0.99 uh, for this project. And once I've added that and hit OK, then in my project, all of the samples that fall out of that um, threshold are going to be automatically excluded. Um, you can always, in the table, right-click and manually include or, or exclude samples, um, irrespective of the threshold. But the threshold is a way to just automatically do that across the whole project. So to reiterate, um, you can use those thresholds to automatically exclude uh, samples. The samples will be grayed out in the actual table in Beeline, and then they will not be exported to your report. Um, a note as well is that um, the SNP table is not calculated when you first um, create the project. So if you want to filter based on SNP metrics, um, to click this Calculate SNP Statistics button to be able to start using that and the threshold function. All right. So we've created our project. We um, looked at the QC metrics and uh, got rid of some stuff that we didn't want in our final report. And then we are ready to generate a report. So there are a couple of report formats that are readily available. Um, there's a DNA report, which is basically just the output from the sample statistics table. A summary report contains all the experiment details. Uh, low size summary report contains the, all the information that's in that SNP statistics table or low size statistics table. And then there's a last option, which is a, called final report, and that's a customizable output for whatever you would like to include, whether that be um, the genotype calls in a specific strand format, the chromosome and location, um, the probe sequence, things like that. All of those are available to add or remove from your report. Um, and you can actually save those report formats in Beeline. So in order to create a report, Go to Reports in Beeline, and this will pull up a window like this, and then you can just select um, which or all of the report types you want, um, and then there's also an option to save favorite formats right here. All right, so that concludes our um, summary of that uh, really quick workflow in Beeline. Um, but another thing that we can also do if, you know, that's just one thing that you can do in Beeline, but there is also the option to <clears throat> create a Genome Studio from Beeline to refine your clustering. So, for example, I've gotten to the step where I'm evaluating my samples and my genotype calls. I'm starting to look at those QC charts and filtering out samples. But rather than cutting those samples or those I all together, <clears throat> I'm thinking, oh, wait, actually, I want to change my cluster file because I want to improve these metrics um, for the clustering for this certain subset of my data. So what you can then do is create a Genome Studio project from that subset to go and be able to refine that cluster file. And then you then have that option to start this process in Genome Studio and if you want to generate a report from Genome Studio. To create a Genome Studio project from Beeline, there are two options. You can either create projects from use so that will um, pull everything in your Beeline project over to Genome Studio. Or you can create projects from selected. In this case, um, Beeline asks you to, or um, you select all the samples and the loci, um, a subset out of your uh, project that you want to port over to Genome Studio. Um, and then only that subset will be included in the resultant project. So what does that look like? In Beeline, I am selecting all of my samples, and I have decided that there is a subset of the loci that I would like to have a closer look at in Genome Studio. So I'm going to create a project from selected, um, and I'm just going to put it into a, the same folder that my Beeline project is in. 
All right, and then I'm going to name my project, and that's going to open up an instance of GM Studio 2.0. So let's skip ahead a little bit because that project is going to take a little bit of time to create. But once we're done loading up that data, I have a um, completed Genome Studio project. And let me maximize that. Yes, and it contains only the low side that I selected earlier, um, but, and then all of the samples that I selected. So you can see here the call rates, um, if you're really eagle-eyed, uh, those call rates are reflecting the call rates for the SNPs that I have currently in this current project. Um, but now that I have this in Genome Studio, I can go ahead and uh, modify those cluster plot, plots however I want if I want to do that to improve um, certain key metrics for my SNP performance. So that's one thing that you can do is you can create a Genome Studio project out of Beeline. Um, another thing that you can do then is also to merge those changes that you make in Genome Studio back into Beeline to complete processing. So in that case, I have moved my um, subset over to Genome Studio. I've refined my cluster file and evaluated that just to make sure that all looks good. Um, but then I can actually move that back into Beeline and uh, merge that cluster, those cluster changes back into my sample set and then generate a report from Beeline. So the way that you actually do that, so here's my Genome Studio project. I made some changes. If I go to File and Export Cluster Positions, um, I can actually export a, a sub-cluster file um, for my project, um, and that will just be containing um, the, uh, those cluster positions for um, the subset that I want to do. In Beeline, there's an option to merge cluster subset. Sorry, that was pretty fast. I can zoom back to go back to that. Um, yep, uh, project and then merge cluster subset. There we go. Um, in Beeline, and then I can select my cluster file. And once that's done merging back in, um, those uh, changed cluster positions will now be reflected in my Beeline project. All right. So that's done. And yeah, just the point that we want to make there is, um, so once you're done with that whole process, um, your cluster file can be merged back into Beeline to complete the workflow. All right, so another reason that you might use this Create Genome Studio Project um, function from Beeline is in order to share data. So the way that Beeline projects are designed, it's meant to be really streamlined um, to get you from end to end really fast. And so because of that, there are some features in the project um, architecture that um, do not allow the project to be opened on another computer easily because uh, it doesn't archive all that information. So in order to share a project, what you can do is either just share those GTC files, manifest file, and cluster file that you use to create a project. Um, as you saw, that a lot of times it's pretty fast to create a project, so that's a quick way to share data. Or what you can do is you can use that function to create a Genome Studio project from Beeline um, to be able to send it over to your collaborator or to tech support if we're uh, requesting your data. So that is our summary of the Beeline workflow. Um, so getting from GTC files to report um, is really um, meant to be a streamlined project creation, data evaluation, and report generation machine, um, but also allows for seamless integration into Genome Studio. Um, and that's really to um, allow both software to be working with, uh, within their strengths um, or the key functions that um, are performed better in each software. All right. So, Beeline. We've gone through the workflow. Now let's think of different ways Beeline can be applied in different array analysis workflows. So, a couple of ways that we can really um, imagine Beeline being used out in the field, but also we see it um, used effectively. Um, you can use Beeline uh, as a way to quickly check data QC. Um, so, we saw that project creation is a lot faster in Beeline. Um, if you want to take a quick look at your data um, right off the scanner before moving on to the next step in analysis, uh, Beeline might be a good way to be able to review those controls dashboard and the call rates and sample statistics before progressing to the next step. 
Another thing that could be done is that you can check that data QC up front and then output the Genome Studio project for that next level analysis. So separating out those functions into different um, software, uh, leveraging the fast project creation strength in Beeline. Um, another thing that can be used, Beeline can be used for is improving the speed of processing for high throughput projects. Um, and that would be leveraging those filtering tools or quick project, uh, quick report generation um, to be able to uh, do those parts of the analysis project faster. Um, and then lastly, Beeline can also be used for creating GTC files for downstream analysis. Um, so uh, if you have a situation where you um, don't have um, auto-convert or um, you already have your IDOTs and didn't run it through autoconvert on the scanner, you have the option to use Beeline to generate those um, GTC files. And as we'll see, GTC files can be used in various ways to just make um, your analysis faster. So let's deep dive into a couple of these examples. So let's imagine a situation um, or a project where you have multiple analysts touching the data. Um, so you might have a uh, a situation where you're wanting to look at the um, data QC right off of the scanner before passing it on to the next analyst, or you may be uh, taking care of the portion where you're um, running the assay, but then somebody else is um, doing the deeper level clustering, um, those type of things. Um, so what you can do is actually streamline that first level QC with Beeline. So an example workflow here. We will scan our arrays now with auto-convert on in the ICANN control software, and therefore output GTC files directly from the scanner. Once we have those GTC files, those can go straight into a Beeline project to allow us to review those assay, sample, and low IQC metrics. Once you have that, um, you have the option to then create a project, a Genome Studio project, from the Beeline project directly, um, and then just pass that whole project on to the next analyst, whether that be a collaborator or the next person in your pipeline, um, to be able to do the rest of the analysis. But that way, that first level of just QCing the data is a lot faster because you're able to leverage that quick project creation to be able to get a look at that QC information much faster. All right, so that's one example. Now we're moving on to another lab where it's a high throughput situation and 24 hours the, the scanner is on and we're just processing a ton of data. And so what can we do in that situation? Well, in that situation, we would recommend not using auto-convert on the scanner because um, the auto-convert software requires some downtime to be able to run. Um, so if the scanner is running 24-7, let's not do that. Instead, you might use a LIM server um, to run the auto-call service to generate um, GTC files. Um, to uh, make the analysis faster, the first thing you can do is load that data into Beeline to be able to filter down um, on, based on your QC metrics to determine whether you want to um, take out some samples or remove some loci uh, before you start pulling those, that information into your next um, part in the pipeline. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, rather than clustering everything at once, um, you can first filter it down in Beeline and then figure out that subset that you want to draw into, B, uh, into Genome Studio uh, to uh, just dedicate less compute power to a smaller data subset. Um, and then once you're done editing those cluster positions, you can port that back into Beeline to complete the process. Um, once you're done with that, you can export a report in, in text format, and this format will um, be generated in a format that will be compatible with your downstream processing, um, whatever your analysis question is. So. Last type is um, using Beeline to generate GTC files. And this isn't addressing Beeline um, specifically, but as we're talking about GTC files, um, GTC files really unlock a lot of workflow flexibility. Um, and in order to get that flexibility, the first step to be able to do that is to generate a cluster file if you don't have one already. Um, or if you do have a cluster file, you can um, use this training um, project to um, get a more robust cluster file that will reflect your sample step better. So we really um, say that this is the first step in getting GTC files, is making sure you have a, a good cluster file that, um, that matches your data well. Um, so the workflow for this, um, you scan um, arrays, output IDAP files, um, and then you must create a Genome Studio project using data from um, about 100 representative samples. Um, the number of samples you might use may vary depending on the minor allele frequency of the SNPs that you're wanting to look at. 
Um, but in any case, uh, you definitely want to have more than 100 to capture that variation within the population. Um, and then when you're done with this uh, genome studio project completing that cluster file, you can export that cluster file as a .egt file. And what that then allows you to do is to be able to apply that cluster file to any project that you have that is using this product, um, and also to be able to generate GTC files, which are then compatible with these next workflows that we'll be mentioning. So for specific guidance on that workflow, I highly recommend this webinar. It's uh, on our recorded webinar page here, um, but it goes through the workflow to create those custom cluster files and the guidance uh, necessary to um, take into consideration. But once we have our cluster file, even if we're not really using Beeline, um, what you can do for GTC files um, is, or what you can do with your cluster file is you can create GTC files, um, and even if you're using Genome Studio primarily for your analysis, using GTC, GTC files will give you that about 20% faster project creation um, that can um, you know, leverage your time better. So if you use either iScan control software with auto-convert on, or if you use Beeline, either way, just using that um, downtime on either the scanner or on the computer um, to do that first step of processing to call the genotypes. Um, and then that way, when you're actually loading your Genome Studio project, it takes just a little bit less time to do that. Um, so that's one way you can use GTC files, um, even just in the context of Genome Studio. Another thing that GTC files um, can be used for is um, to, as an input into our open source Python library for parsing GTC files, and this was released earlier last year. So this would be of interest to users who want to explore a more fully automated approach um, bypassing a graphical user interface. Um, and it's a Python library, so it's Linux compatible. Um, it's really provided by developers straight to, straight to a GitHub page, um, so there's not really a, a user interface or anything like that around it. It's just a, a set of software tools and a library um, so that uh, developers out there in the field like, like you can, uh, you know, develop your own methods to, uh, to automate um, filtering and analysis and reporting um, however you want. Um, but it gives you that um, API to start building those um, those software tools um, by giving you the language to be able to parse those GTC files. So that's another thing that Beeline could be used for. Um, so say if you are scanning the arrays, you could use iScan control software with autoconvert on. Or if you were provided just IDAT files, you can use Beeline to um, generate GTC files from the IDAT files. Once you have those GTC files, you can use the Breed Array of Files Python library um, to be able to uh, generate um, customized tools and scripts um, that will allow you to complete the next part of your analysis. So yes, GTC files, um, good for open source tooling. All right, so that's our summary of all the things that we went through. Um, so we talked about uh, introduction to Beeline software and its features and benefits. We walked through the Beeline analysis workflow, and those are included in your slides for reference. And then lastly, we went through some examples of how Beeline can be used in different array analysis workflows. So I left some additional resources for you um, after this webinar as well to look through. Um, if you want to install Beeline, the installer link is on the Beeline support page as well as user guides. Um, we have this tech note that walks through um, different microarray data analysis workflows, and I highly recommend our other recorded webinars involving genotyping analysis, because um, uh, we've mentioned a couple of these in the context of this webinar, that can really help you build um, the pipeline that works best for you in your context. And then there is some more information about um, how to set up auto-call or auto-convert um, uh, on your iScan or on your LIM server, um, and then also a link to the beta-ray files open source library.